Hello and welcome to Locked in FPL. We're back from the international break for game week four. I am excited to bring you a special guest, Nick Triggerlips, an old friend of the show back after a few seasons. Looking forward to speaking to him about how he got into FPL, his favorite memories, also touch on his four times uh, top 1K finishes, which is incredible, and uh, talk a little bit about Chelsea and his wildcard, because as I understand it, Nick, you're already on a wildcard in game week four. So welcome to the channel, Nick. Pleasure to have you. Mate. All, right, uh, all right. Good to be back again. It's been a while, hasn't it? So... <laughs> too long, too long. Um, you remember the old story? I think we'll say it for comedy. Do you remember there was that time when you came on as a guest and um, you guys had been going for like 20 minutes and people in the comments were saying, guys, you're not live and you had to restart the show. <laughs> Do you remember that? Oh, that's right. I remember. <laughs> There's carnage, isn't it? <laughs> oh, so please let us know in the chat, guys, if we're not live on that note. We don't want to do that to Nick twice. It's 5 a.m. in New Zealand. He's one day ahead. He's traveled to the future. It's a uh, first day, the 12th of December for you, isn't it? It is. That's how I do so well. In, well, how I used to do well in FPL. Get the results before you lot have even woken up. I love that. But, yeah, I'm normally up early, so it's not too, too much of a hardship to uh, be on. Awesome. So what I'd like to do first, Nick, is I'd like to just go through how you got into FPL. And like, I've got your kind of rank history here. I know you began playing in kind of 2007, 2008. So not too long before me, I think I began in maybe 2012 season, but how did you get into it? And um, I guess kind of like, what was it that appealed to you? Because what I can see here, and if anyone is listening on podcast, I just think I'll quickly read this out, just because obviously they won't see this graphic. Um, I always talk about how there's this three-year spell where, maybe even a five-year spell, where you're probably the best FPL manager in the world, I would say. So like in 2010 to 2013, you obviously had three top 1K finishes, but these ranks were 434th, 776th, and then 35th. And then within this five-year period, so the following two years, your worst rank was 1.7k and then another 590th finish. So, like, how did you get into FPL and how did you so quickly go through that five-year period? Like, that's insane. Like, I, I can't think of anyone who has a record like that over any spell of FPL. Like, I just have to know. Like, because to me, you've always been one of the best FPL managers of all time for this kind of run you had. Um... FPL, not so much FPL, but fantasy football. I started playing way back. It was like the mid nineties, I think. I saw an advert in a local paper for a league to play. Um, you know, the Premier League or whatever it was. I don't even know. Yeah, it would have been the Premier League game, wouldn't it? Just about. But um, that was played by mail, and we used to send off our transfers every week to Wellington, and then we get a big sheet back of everybody's transfers and. Uh, so that's how I started. That was a long time ago. I mean, I think I picked Beckham in my first season. He was only about 17. And that's how long ago that was. But um, this game here, I was playing another one as well with the Fantasy Pink or whatever it was called. I don't know if you remember that. It was like the original kind of fantasy before this one took over. Before my yeah. time, I think. Yeah, before my yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Then um, I don't know what happened to that one. Then I started playing this one. And um, it was pretty weird, to be honest, because I was just playing in my local work league. And um, I went on scout and whatnot. I used to be on the dead zone and everything. But then I started having all these like crazy, crazy good finishes. I remember the first one I finished 400 and something. And um, the guy at work, he said to me, oh, it's really great. You know, you're never going to do that again. You know, enjoy it. You're never going to do it again. And then the next like four years were pretty much the same thing. And it was like, I don't know why, it was just crazy. I didn't do much. I mean, I was just um, playing my normal game, talking on the dead zone at night. And um, basically, yeah, I don't know why. It was strange. I have a question for you then, because um, I do think that there is, um, I, I don't know like whether this is still relevant today, but I remember that you had a piece of content that was almost like a Ten Commandments of FPL. And I used to read this in the preseason a lot. Do, do you, I guess, yeah, the question is like, do you still stand by those rules back then? Um, equally, if you don't, do you feel like 
certain things have changed, like certain principles that you went by back then have changed? Because maybe it is just as simple as you played by certain sets of principles. And back then there wasn't as many maybe engaged managers who played with those principles and you'd found the right kind of magic, I don't know, the, the blueprint to success. Yeah, that was it, I think, really, wasn't it? I mean, I was doing basically what people do now. And most people weren't. It was like, you know, like I had a template with various price points and all, all the things that people do now, as I was doing then. And then other people started doing it too, didn't they? And um, so the edge kind of disappeared after a while, I guess. But um, as to what exactly it was, it's um, difficult to know. Because I don't think I played any dif differently in the next few seasons. Although you see the... Next three seasons, actually, I didn't do too badly, I guess. 56,000 was the worst score. And what, what year was COVID? That was about 20 or 21. Or yeah, whatever. so that's your 100K. Um, that's still, again, great. Like, like for me, right, like I always, I think you know this, I, for about six, seven years now, I always aim to get like about top 100K. So for me, when I see a history like this, obviously it has the incredible finishes too. But even really like, some of the tougher finishes they're not that bad they're like the rank i aim for in any given season so for you maybe you were disappointed after the high me, though, five years yeah for me they're bloody awful <laughs> <laughs> I, I look that. at them and i think i mean last year i actually gave up i stopped playing because um that one what was it one not last oh, year that's the a year top before. one percent i was about to say the year before i, I thought you must have quit in that yeah. Yeah. yeah, when I saw that seven digit rank, I was like, this is when he quit and started playing chess full time and just fucked off every other basic. That's exactly what happened. Because <laughs> I'm always after a top 1k finish. I just want another 1k finish. And as soon as I realize I can't get one, I kind of give up slightly. You know, I mean, I'm playing other formats and stuff. And uh, so that one, yeah, last, the year before, last year was interesting because. I was doing really badly. I was about three million, I think, at Christmas time. And uh, but I ended up finishing eighty-two k, which isn't too bad, is it? Really, I suppose. Did it feel like a slog? Because I had what I considered the worst start in eight seasons. Mm. Feel right, and it actually ended up being one of my like fourth or fifth best finishes. So similar to, you, I think I finished similar rank, and it just felt like such a slog. Everything mm. about it felt painful. Like. I don't know if it's because the price points were kind of wrong or whether just the game had gotten stale because they'd not changed any rules for eight years. But despite getting an OK finish, because that's a top 1% finish, really, like it's more than top 1% that 82K. I'm guessing something, I don't know if you relate to that. Like, how did you find last season as a whole? Not just last season, the last three or four seasons, I've really struggled mentally to be bothered playing because nothing changed. The pricing was ridiculous. It was all far too easy. I mean, I know saying it's easy doesn't help you get a good rank, does it? Because it's easy for everybody. But it's a lot less kind of mentally challenging. And so it's not so, it's difficult to really get into it. You know, everyone's got the same team and um, everyone had Harland and everybody, didn't they? And um, But this year is so much better. I'm really enjoying it again now. This feels more like it used to be back in uh, like five plus years ago when you can't have everybody you've got to make tough decisions but all week on my wild card i spent a whole week i still haven't got a clue what i'm doing i wish i'd never pressed the bloody button because i I've, <laughs> it's just so difficult and uh, but that's how it should be isn't it it's like I think that's where the fun is right like i remember mm. so many sleepless nights kind of sitting there in my brain racking up different transfer moves or like should i get this guy or that guy and what will i do in a few weeks and writing notes in my phone notepad and like some of that joy here has been gone for a while this year i just feel mm. like i'm seeing differences in teams and it's quite exciting again it's been such a long time since it felt like that yeah i know it's definitely i mean even last week when harlan got his hat trick and you think oh great i've done really well this week and then the next day salah goes and does the same and it's just like you just can't put a lid on everything, can you? It's um, so many different ways to play in that. So, 
It makes what were your lot thoughts? More interesting. What were your thoughts on the um, early celebrators who said that you're not playing FPL right if you don't have Haaland? You're an idiot on the Saturday, and by the Sunday, both Salah and Haaland had the exact same number of points so far. It was bloody annoying to be honest, because I was one of <laughs> well, I wasn't talking like that, but I was quite happy thinking, oh, thank God, I've got Haaland. And now, even because I didn't want him to be honest, I, was, I only wanted him for that Ipswich game. Because I was really annoyed they were playing Ipswich because I didn't want to start the season with Haaland because I think he's overpriced. And um, so I had to get him, but then I was quite pleased. But um, now I'm on wildcard. I'm thinking of getting rid of him again now because everyone's buying him. So I'm thinking it's a good chance to differentiate. So um, before we go more into this season, I just want to. Before we get into this season, Nick, I want to go back to 2014 because obviously that was in that period of five seasons where you basically finish what four times top 1k and the only rank that wasn't top 1k was 1.7k and if you go by my mathematics i call that top 1k i know a lot of people in the chat disagree with me and it's a controversial opinion but i don't care it starts with a one it's a top 1k nick on this channel i'm going to rename the description of the video and say you have five top 1ks as far as i'm concerned but in that final season of that jokes aside this was your game week one team um you had 79 points the average at the time was 47 points i think it's a 5,000 game week rank you said this was your favorite memory in fpr i'd love you to talk us through it a little bit and kind of even the graphics are a throwback i see the fifa 15 uh, hoardings on the boards um i see bloody hell like <laughs> chester 15 points are in the defense like aaron ramsey fabregas at chelsea sigurdsson um Wayne Rooney, captain, what a throwback, man. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I keep all records of all these things, so I, I quite enjoy looking back. But um, this season, I was on holiday in the UK, and I was at a fate, I think, down in Cornwall somewhere, some kind of event. So I had uh, limited coverage of what was going on. And every time I turned the radio on, there was like someone was scoring, like Sigerson and Fabregas, Ramsey, Rooney, Costa. All and then Blimin Chester scored. Um, <laughs> when I went for a really cheap defense, this defense I had here was like they're all 4.5s, I think. And um, everybody else had the likes of Harvey Bands and all these players that were like seven million or whatever. And I just went for a really cheap defense. I stuck Chester in, he was away at QPR. You know, and you, you don't pick whole players, do you? I mean, let's be honest, but I picked him, put him in. And he scored the only goal in the game and got um, 15 points. So it was crazy. And when I look back at this, and I see my team was quite a bit different from the other teams that were all on Fantasy Scout or whatever. But now it's like everyone's got this. Even I do it now. I've got the same blooming team as everyone else at the start almost. And like Twitter and that's kind of taking the joy out of it in a way i think it's kind of subconsciously led us all down these us all down the same path doesn't it but yeah. um the joy of having a team like this and it coming off i think that's the most exciting thing can happen in fpl you know when you pick a real differential or a number of differentials and it works that feeling is so good that you can't you can't really get it these days when you you can't beat it you know, can you? Like, if you get yeah. Rogers and he gets a hat trick you know a million other people crowing on Twitter that they got. Well, if you haven't got a mix of disaster, but if you do, you know, it's not that same feeling as having a Chester or somebody like that, you know. So, but um, that was a crazy, but this was the only season I didn't get in the top 1,000. So I've got, I actually only finished 1,700. So I was annoyed this season because I only finished 1,700. But um, to me, that was a failure. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah. But I think that's the best start I've ever had. I, I think it looks unbelievable. Points. It looks unbelievable. One thing I want to ask you about, because I actually was going to ask it before, was about this kind of cheap defence and the good old days of uh, trying to skimp out as much at the back as possible. I noticed that your entire bench scored zero um, <laughs> that week. No, um, no, no, no. It, it didn't, actually. Klein scored a goal. Okay. I think I think it didn't used to show it in those days. I see. I was about to say, like, that's like okay, no, so that no, must they, be an old thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they didn't score zero because I know Klein scored. 
think he went, it must be a Southampton kit, is it? I can't remember now. Would have been Southampton. But um, yes, yeah, so I thought that was strange too. But obviously, they never used to show the um, points in those days. Makes sense. And by the way, just so you know, in the background, I've gone and found the file from your last appearance on uh, Net That Hall. And um, I'm trying to upload it in the background for later in the show. Oh, not again. <laughs> this will definitely be the last time um, it gets wheeled out. <laughs> Oh, God. Um, all right, we'll go into FPL because we're 15 minutes in. Um, I'm sure there's a couple shout-outs we owe in the chat. So I'm just going to timestamp this as well to do some shout-outs. And we'll start starring your questions, guys, for the live Q&A at the end, as always. Thank you for tuning in. Um, really appreciate Nick coming on at 5 a.m. tomorrow in New Zealand. He has come from the future, as I mentioned. We're going to look at your Game Week 3 team, some data, Chelsea, as I mentioned, thoughts on wildcard, lots of great FPL content for Game Week 4. But before that, I just really quickly want to shout everyone out who's tuned in live and thank you all for your support. Podna, what's up, Podners? Thank you for tuning in, buddy. Uh, Gary Swan, this is actually FPL Chess, in case you didn't know, Nick. Um, so he's an old friend of the show as well. Claire FPL, good to see you evening. Getty FPL, good evening all. FPL Maggot, good evening, buddy. FPL Bateman, he's obviously in your the real community um what's with, what's with the what, what's with this evening business that people keep it, it's all unai emery isn't it they're all they're all still holding on to him he's become a uh, cult classic <laughs> they, <laughs> david harrison hi guys um bw splitter howdy all from the us good to see you live buddy robin popperwell goodbye international break forever i wish that was the case i feel like we're only three four games away from the bloody next one um Elron Cupboard, Ahoy Shippers. Uh, Delia says, this comes in handy. I don't know what I should do with Palmer. So we'll get to the chances section for sure. Kanji FPL, hello, hello. So Podno is what prompted me to download the clip. He said, is Gray going to score tonight? Uh, Gary says, Nick is a legend. Vocal, fun fact. Good to see you, Oscar. He says, before I ever made FPL content, I DM Nick to invite him on the FPL subreddit for an Ask Me Anything. So that's very fun. Um, that's actually where I started out in the community. So I was kind of using Scout to like find data. And then I was on Reddit and I was lurking and looking for injury news and lineup news. And it was only then I eventually found Twitter. I didn't like, I wasn't really a Twitter guy. I was just on the daily RMT threads, giving people opinions. And one day I thought, who are these random people I'm getting opinions from on my team? Like, they're just like random lurkers on FPL subreddit like me. And I have no idea of their credentials. Like maybe I should go to X where I can like kind of start putting names to faces and actually be part of a community. Um, I think Reddit became a lot more toxic uh, eventually in the later years. Um, Bateman says, Nick is as no nonsense in FPL as he is with the FPL community. Greg Frost, thanks for tuning in. Say, Nick never minded ruffling a few feathers in the FF Scout forum. <laughs> the double pivot pod, good to see you guys. Yes, pal, good evening. Um, Maggot says, what an impressive record. So Greg Frost is currently taking a minus four to get Lewis for 4.6 million is still tempting me to push wildcard. I'll start that to come back to in the Q&A as a comment. Podna says, hit that like button. So yes, please, guys, if you enjoyed this episode, please do hit that like button. So Jamie T, easy trigger, long time chat. Remember you being on the scout cast with Joe and co. Um, we have, what else do we have? So Greg's had an incredible start. Doesn't own Salo or Harlan. Bench boost game week one. Hasn't used triple captain, 162k rank, and captaining Eze, Trent, or Diaz this week. I like that a lot. Any final bits? So Gary Swan just says, Nick on 3 million last Christmas reaching top 80k is above and beyond. Um, FPL Frazzled, morning and evening to you both. And uh, yeah, FPL Dad, thank you for tuning in, buddy. What's the crack meme? Oh, great stuff. But so everyone, we will keep putting your comments up on screen as we go. I'm just going to timestamp this as 19 minutes so the poor podcast listeners can skip the last four minutes of shout outs to live attendees. And I'm going to stop talking, Nick, and ask you to tell us about how last week went and I guess what prompted you to hit that wild card, which you now kind of potentially regret pressing because you just don't know who to pick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, yeah, last week, I think that was my first red arrow last week, actually. I knew it would be coming on this program. I think I said that to you, didn't I? You said always you always does. have a red arrow before you go on any show. Yeah. And I was like, don't worry, you were going to break the curse. 
But it's not, I haven't had a bad start, I'd say. What's well, this, am I? One and a half million. Yeah, it's not too bad. So, um, wildcard, yeah, I, I don't know really. Um, let's see, who are my problem? Johnson doesn't play for, but that didn't really matter, did it? I mean, I could have quite easily lived with him. Hall, another problem. Probably dropping in price. I mean, I know the prices have slowed down midweek. But you've got to think of like an international week is really one week. And t people say, oh, the prices aren't changing, but it'll be about the same amount as in a normal week. It'll probably pick up again today or tomorrow, I think. And uh, so Hall probably will drop. Isaac might drop, although he's reasonable to have in. Munez, I wasn't overly happy with him. And in the midfield, Gibbs White. We've got a few points in Gibbs White, but they're away to Liverpool this week. And it's good fixtures are running out. Jota, I've got a feeling Jota might not even play this week. I mean, um, what's his face? Darwin's been um, hanging around with nothing else to do, hasn't he? Because he's banned from internationals. So, I mean, he could well come in this week. Defence is looking... Actually, defence isn't too bad, apart from Hall and Johnson. So, yeah, there's really no need to wildcard this team. But I do like to wild card early and not having Salah is kind of annoying me. I mean, he's gone up 0.1 this week, which isn't much, but I mean, he could go up again. And um, Saka, don't know what to do with him. Mad Wakey, don't know, might keep him, might not. I've got two price rises out of him already, so locked one in. Um, yeah, so basically wild card. Another reason for wild carding was that uh, it's much better to do it at the start of a week than the end of a week. And I knew that one more problem on international duty, like even one injury or anything would make this team where it needed a wild card. So that um, I thought I'd just press the button and get it over with. And it gave me something to do. And I want um, Palmer as well. That's the other thing. And there's no way I can get Palmer in with this team. So... I thought I'd just wildcard it and see what happens, basically. I have a question for you. Um, so, yeah, this team's similar to mine in a sense. Um, I moved early with two free transfers with the mentality that should I get an, any issues or injuries, even one, I could then just wildcard and try to get my two free transfers back and then, like, keep rolling. Mm. Um, that problem did occur now. So I have a bench of Lewis Hall and Barco. And console went off uh, for for England. I bring him up because of um, your infamous uh, concert Duncan Winks. I don't know if Dunk that's the Consa correct Winks. order. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so, believe so it when I when I went on to that league and they all had exactly the same bench, like Dunk Concert Winks. I was going through the teams one after the other. Dunk Concert Winks. <laughs> 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 I thought you'd like that. I had to bring that one up. Um, so what's funny is obviously I've been doing the new pod with uh, Simon, who's an analytic FPL, and um, he actually named one of the episodes Dunk Console Winks, I think, afterwards. <laughs> I, I feel like someone, I think it was Sam Sports Science, he was saying, look, you need to get these guys to like send like letters to each other back and forth each week. And I was like, no, no, no. One day we need to get Nick on the other podcast, Expected Grass, and have them go at it fully on air, like just live no filter because you know me like <laughs> i like everyone i like every style of playing i like stirring the pot you know like you you know as well i know you hate leakers for example when i confess to you i used to be a leaker once you forgave me for my sins you know i i'd like to think despite my past errors we're still friends so i have quanta i hope you can forgive me and i think i've had karma for it with that injury well, I wish I had Dunk Console Winks myself, actually, because they were pretty good picks, really, weren't they? I mean, Dunk would have been very good this week. And um, I'm a bit annoyed Console got injured because I don't rate him particularly. And I think if people are going to play Dunk instead of Concert, then they're going to do better than if they'd had Concert. Or if they're playing um, Robinson, for example. Because Concert, I mean, he might get a clean sheet, but he's not going to get any attacking returns, is he? So I think what we're going to find now is a lot of these concert owners are going to get loads of points off the bench. That's how it normally works, isn't it? So, maybe this um, is the week Lewis Hall we'll starts. Yeah, maybe that's what happens. Maybe 
Conce's out. Lewis Hall starts, gets a clean sheet because he's subbed in the 60th minute. Gets free bonus. Yeah, yeah. You know, sort of, the, the, I could dream, right? Yeah, they're getting I, their luck somewhere. I know you love Jam. Well, even Wink, Wink's a score. Wink's a score a goal. Oh, man. I remember the days when people would get injured and I'd always have a 4.5 million midfielder. And everyone would be like, okay, I'm going to sell someone to get someone in. And I'd be like, mm, but why? Like, I just play my 4.5 million mid. And then was like, no, they're never going to get a return. And I'm pretty sure a few times I got super lucky. And like, I got like 10 pointers out of like some random crappy 4.5 million. Mid. <laughs> so it does happen. It does happen. I think you can definitely overmanage an FPL. I'd like to learn how to play the new style where you can roll to five transfers and like yeah be more especially patient. now mm. yeah now i think you do play wings don't you with the new rules because I, I would saving a transfer is now much more valuable i mean i i've been unlucky in the sense that i had solanke so i had to make a transfer the first week i think if solanke hadn't got injured we'd be looking at a whole better rank now i mean I think he would have got loads of points in that second match when he missed. I can't remember who they played, but they battered somebody. And I'm sure he would have yeah, got Yeah, the first points. two games were great. Yeah, they were the fixtures mm. to target, right? Um, and they'd have had two free transfers, no need to wildcard. You know, one little thing goes wrong and it kind of can snowball pretty quickly, can't it? And like before you know it, you've got no transfers, you've got a few problems and it can happen really quickly. So, um I think I've got to be a lot more um, strict in not making transfers. You know, you, you've got to forget about the shiny new toys and just not make a transfer and play one of your bench players. So even if you get a few less points, having that extra transfer is going to be really good. I mean, I slagged off all those analytics people for having the same team and for like keeping Quanza and losing 0.2 on Quanza and losing money on... Fernandez and Eze and all these people, but the team value is dropping. But then I look at their teams now and they're looking, they've got really good looking teams. You know, they've got Eze and Fernandez in this week, Dunk, Consul, Winks, and all these people all in their teams. And I think they're doing well. They're obviously saving up transfers by not taking Quanta out. So it's going to be quite interesting, isn't it? It's another thing that shows the differences in the way that you can play the game this season. It's going to be very interesting. You know, is getting higher team value going to be better than saving transfers or saving wild cards? We just don't know, do we? And that's what's exciting, right? It's like a fresh new world. Mm. Um, and in yeah. a way, mod models need to learn that too, right? So models historically would have probably had a certain points value associated with a transfer. I know some people always used to say like they treat free transfers as like a four point hit because that's how mm. much the additional transfer costs. With the way we can roll them now and you can roll them through the chips, it's hard to know how to value a transfer anymore. And I think equally, mm. like, that's something we're going to learn. So I do think that if you kind of figure it out faster than the data catches up, there is an opportunity. And just to look at, like, the ranks and how condensed they are, like, you're only 89 points from first right now. Like, you know, anything is still possible. So that better. <laughs> yeah, well, anything is still possible, right? <laughs> um, well, let's say like 100K, you're 30 points from 100K at 1.5 million. Like, it's not going to be like that in 30 weeks. You know what I mean? Like, these gaps will get bigger. So right now, I don't really care for rank. Like, mm, I think 10 matter, weeks in, we look at it, right? Like, right now, we don't need to worry too much about rank. E so what Even you until the rank? end, even until game 38, it doesn't matter because... Mm -hmm. I mean, look at last season. I stream a million at Christmas, comes through to 80k because it's all the, all the chips and everything just totally distort. That's what I hate the most about the chips. You can't, you can never look at the table and see where you really are because so many of you are triple captain and some of you are bench boost. And, and the ranks are just unrealistic, aren't they? They don't really show the true picture until right at the end. So um, it's pretty pointless trying to. Um, see where you are in comparison to other people in a way especially this early on so do you so would you agree that because i i kind of start to look at like my mini leagues where maybe i'm winning or i'm chasing in the last kind of i'd say four or five weeks i really start to like think about them but i've got friends right who like they'll see i have someone in my team in game week two who got points and they'll buy him in game week three like <laughs> i know people who will like try to compete and like see what people above them in mini leagues have like two three weeks in 
I just feel like I'm playing against myself and my own previous best. Same to how you're competing to try to get top 1K. That's your goal. I'm just trying to beat my previous best. Like, it's like a time trial for me. Like, you know, like in the racing games, they have the ghost car and you're trying to beat your previous ghost and finish the lap faster. Like, I'm just kind of doing that and hoping that by playing the way I think is right, ultimately people around me will knee jerk or panic or make mistakes and I'll rise naturally rather than mm. like, oh my God, the people above me have these players. So now I need to do it. I don't know if, if that kind of resonates with you. It's very difficult to ignore what everyone's doing, isn't it, these days? It's uh, everything you look at, everything you watch, every time you go on Twitter or whatever, you see, you know, like Rogers this week. Everyone's getting Rogers and or got Rogers already. And it kind of starts playing on your head after a while, doesn't it? And you, you're kind of led. And it's quite difficult to um, fight it, isn't it? Like that herd instinct, it's tricky. So everyone ends up with the same team. But um, I'm going to try and put in a few differentials on my wild card, I think. And I'm not just going to um, look at what I've... I think looking at what other people are doing doesn't help. It doesn't help at all, really. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of getting at. But then even on a more minuscule level, I'm looking at it within a mini league setting only. Mm. Um, but I guess at the overall wider community of Twitter and the engage managers there. And again, like, I just think there's so many ways to play that there's nothing wrong with however anyone wants to play. So, like, I know you did the podcast that you said about the analytic managers. Um, I don't know if you, I think you did see, right, the uh, the Wire episode with Press and Trout. And I think that was a nice, successful mm, way. That was very good. That one. I, I enjoyed that. It was you enjoyed very that, well. right? Very well done. It was. Um, he asked all the right questions, and because I don't know much about it myself, and um, so it's quite interesting. That's what I mean. But, it um, is right. Like it's just a tool, and like in the same way that there's people who just mindlessly copy their favorite content creator week in week out, mm. or copy team reviews from a site they subscribe to. Like they're all playing in their own way too, right? And I couldn't care mm. less. Like I don't really mm. care how anyone else plays. Like you said about not watching what people are doing. So if someone wants to use tools like analytics tools to kind of map out different paths or do different solves in a way a computer's more powerful than us, I have no aversion. I will use those tools and look at them to sense check my thoughts. A lot of the time I go against what the computer says, right? And I think that's the difference. Mm. Um, so I think there's a difference yeah. between trying to win FPL, trying to get consistent ranks. And then on top of that, I just hate the moaning about people. Like I know people who are like, oh my God, these guys are like paying to see fucking team reveals or oh my god these guys are paying to fucking use review or oh my, like i just i don't care like i just want to win i want to beat my friends i want to do well i want to get a triple digit rank like you like I, I know you you talk about them but i think something people don't realize is you're not talking about that you care how they play you're worried that will long term we get to a point where the computer is so good that not only is there the herd that's hard to avoid but you worry that I guess the FPL would be solved. Is that right? Like solved in yeah, the sense right. that like, why would you ever not do what the computer says? Because like the computers figured it out that much. Solved in the way that it ruined the game because basically, you know, they ruin all the mini leagues and everything, your local work leagues, because people in them will be doing that and no longer playing their own games. And it's, I mean, I like, put the analogy in with chess. Like, if everybody was allowed to use an engine when they played chess, then chess would uh, totally die, you know. But luckily, you can. Not allowed to. But in FPL, there's nothing to stop people from doing that. You know, at the moment, it doesn't matter because it's not good enough. I mean, nothing, nothing will convince me that having Armstrong in the team and having Edison in goal is a good way to play FPL. I know the engines love them. The... Um, analytics but nothing would ever convince me but they're good picks but is, so, that um, not, is that not one thing to touch on then so is it not that there's a misconception that people are just copying what a model says when in reality the model says something and then they fine-tune it by saying like oh exclude edison i never want him or maybe the model thinks like a certain player only gets 60 70 minutes but you think because of based mm. on what you're watching or tactical tweaks or injuries you think they're going to get 90 minutes so you're almost adjusting their baseline and saying, well, they're going to get 90 minutes. Therefore, I think that there's more value in them than the model does. So mm. I believe, like you, the model isn't good enough to just copy blindly. Mm. In reality, it's just another tool where 
it's an interface that you're kind of putting your own assumptions in and your own opinions to like get you yeah, to the yeah. right answer. I think people just assume that people are like pressing a button and copying. I know you're scared of like a future Terminator yeah, at, style at, world. At where, the moment, yeah, you press the, the button. It's just a tool, isn't it? At the moment, it's just a tool. But sooner or later, it's going to be good enough to realize that Armstrong and Edison aren't good picks. We probably score a hat trick this week now, and um, Armstrong. But um, <laughs> but you know, people are sooner or later, it is going to be able to pick all the right picks. And then, that's but do when you it truly kind of... believe that though? Because I feel football is such a high game of variance. Like at any given time, like the favorite can lose a match, right, and everything can go the opposite of. We say the Premier League's great because yeah. anyone can be anyone. Like, so I, I still believe personally that, like, I, I maybe I'm just trying to be optimistic and believe that there is a future where you don't just press a button and like that is the best way to play and it just automates everything. I just don't think that can happen in something like fantasy Premier League because, mm. like, it, it's just it's too difficult. Like, I, I just think no matter what, the computer can never be 100 in this. Yeah, it can't because um, 38 game weeks isn't long enough for all the variables to play out. You know, if it was a million game weeks, you could have a computer that would win. Then it would win FPL every time, I every think. Time. Yeah, absolutely. Because luck would, luck would be out of it. But with 38 game weeks, you can be a really, really good manager now and still finish 100K or 200K because you haven't had uh, luck. You know, because 38 weeks is a pretty short sample, isn't it, really? So, um, you know, you can, if you get your captains right or get them wrong. You know, even coin flips, you could have 38 coin flips and it would be possible to have 38 heads. I mean, very unlikely, but it's possible, you know. So, I mean, you could have everything go wrong for 38 weeks and um, end up with a bad rank. So... The best player is not going to win FPL, probably ever. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? In, in There's a, a lot of luck of playing FPL. You can play for a hundred years and be the best player without winning FPL quite easily. It'd probably be a surprise if they did win it. The best player, you know. So, um, I mean, has anybody, any of the serious players that are high in the Hall of Fame? gone on and won FPL. I don't think any of them have. You know, some are on high on the Hall of Fame because they have previously won FPL or previously come close. But have any of them in the top 100 ever gone on to win FPL? I'd say they haven't. So, yeah. I would agree. Even like Fabio Borges and these guys, right, who like mm. Tom Stevenson, who came on the channel as our first guest in the first year five years ago. Like, yeah, a lot of people don't end up winning but they're like the best manager mathematically in terms of like you mm. three four year period right like when you finished here you know 400 700 500 like like I, like i i don't know like i would believe there's more skill in what you did there than the person who won once and finished seven digit rank every other year but then there's obviously people who want to play to win and they're gonna play sub optimally as it might be called compared to solvers and ai models but there's nothing wrong with that as well because if they want to play to win, then yeah, they're going to be on the wrong side of luck a lot mm. too to get that one win. So I guess it comes down to why do you play FPL? And I think I just want to bring up a couple of the comments in the chat. So like um, FPL FOMO says, where's the fun in copying someone else? Very odd. Um, we also have Bateman says there would never be the sort of conflict in chess that there is in FPL. FPL FOMO says AI couldn't predict price rises, recent red cards, small margins in every game, such as random injuries. Um, probably Samantha, could though, couldn't it? I think it's because it, uh, FPL it keep the probably price could. change a secret, right? Mm. But it That's could use sites. It could probably skim the info off the um, sites that predict FPL rises, couldn't it? Yeah, but they also yeah. don't know the real algorithm, right? Mm, like uh, no, it's, it's, it's all guesswork yeah like fpl keep it very secret um so matt bugsby says someone like lingard at west ham is the bane of ai solvers um yeah so so yeah i think the, i just wanted to put some of those comments up because um, what's lingard done <laughs> no just do you remember his purple patch at west ham he was someone i didn't buy until the very end ah. severely hurt mm. my rank 
And um, at the moment, X mins is a new mantra, isn't it? Everyone's talking about X mins now. But um, often the big hauls have come from like somebody with, who hasn't got big X mins, you know, like um, a lot of people avoided Jota because of that, didn't they? But he could have come up and got a hat trick or, three, you know, three or four goals. And uh, there are a lot of players that only play for 60, 70 minutes that are pretty good and that are now being avoided by the AI teams because they don't play for 80 or 90 minutes. So um, that could be a weakness with the AI, I think. So there are still, yeah, there's opportunities to go against it and get mm. ahead. Um, what do you think about what FPL FOMO said here about where is the fun in copying someone else? Very odd. Um, I would 100% agree, of course, but I think just to clarify what I was saying earlier, like if people want to do that, I don't care. Like my it's been mentality is like, years. yeah, it's, that's what I mean. Like it's always happened. It's just maybe not been obvious. It's been happening, but it has always been it, happened. It used to be me that people copy. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was going to say. Surely people were messaging you like, "Why did you reveal year. your team one minute after deadline?" You asshole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember one year. I think I got to about game week nine, and there were like eleven teams identical to my own one. That was in one of my top thousand years. So in the, in the end, I put out a, a false tweet, and it, it wasn't a tweet; it was something on scout, and it upset everybody because I gave out the wrong info on what I was going to do on purpose because I was just sick of everybody copying me. So they all went and got this player in that I said I was going to get. I've got another, and the one I said I was going to get went and outscored the one I got. So then there, <laughs> all the people ahead of me were. Well, copy me are all ahead of me so um, i shouldn't have done that but i was just so sick of everybody um copying my team <laughs> yeah that was cra crazy yeah but um i saw some team 1700 wasn't it had the same team as bakar i think after game week one i think it was like, 1700 people oh i remember the clones on live fpl right hmm I think something yeah, people don't realise about that as well is that's only your starting eleven. It doesn't account for the bench in any way. And I think people... How does it not? That. Yeah, yeah. So that's only the starting eleven, um, which I think means that obviously it's more likely. Now, I thought I'd have a lot mm. of clones because I play quite a template way and I generally have most of the high-owned players. But it said I only had three clones in game week three. So I was quite shocked. Yeah, I think it's going to have same. a few I, weird I, players, I, right? I, I have like four of Oh, you had I didn't none. Have any game week one, but I didn't have an unusual team. I had a pretty template team, I think. That's what I thought, but then maybe two or three differentials, and that specific combination of them in your eleven is unique mm. for you, right? Maybe it was having Ariola in goal because everybody else went with Henderson, didn't they? So that might you say that, nice. but even Henderson, I think, is like quite low compared to Flecken. So it's like oh, I guess there's it? so many variations. Yeah, there's so many variations. Um, and I think there's like what the Twitter ownership is versus what the mass ownership is. So you got players like Palmer who had very high ownership, but then maybe amongst like FPL Twitter managers, it wasn't as high. And I think that's a good segue into two topics. So one is I see Madueke here. I feel like he was like a one week punt just before the wild card. Do you feel that that almost forced you into the wild card? And then no, no, about... man, I think he, I think he'd do well. I mean, we're going to so be you, would you still have him? I'm thinking of keeping him on my wild card. Okay. The only reason I won't keep him probably is because I'm going to be getting Palmer in. Ooh, but I, I think like if that. you have, I think if you haven't got Palmer, I think there's nothing wrong with Madueke. He looked okay. good for England the other night, didn't he? When he came on, got an assist. He was only yeah, on for five assist. minutes. Got an assist. He was unlucky last week. He could have had a, a goal last week. I mean, the main reason I got him was because somebody else was dropping in price. I can't remember who I took him out, brought him in for now. No, but um, I got a point two rise out of him during the game week after bringing him in. So that like locks in a point one profit for the your season. Bank, that, yeah. And um, so that was like a point two swing, which over the season is going to be worth a couple of points probably. So I thought, well, if he gets points, he gets points. If he doesn't, he doesn't. I mean, everyone else is bringing in. Who would they bring in? Rogers, maybe uh, bringing him. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Um, no, they I, end, I, they I ended up on the same one. points for the week. But uh, Matt yeah, Ray, I, I had Rogers um, in game week one because I just, I just believed that like he was a nice, young, talented player. 
maybe he'll play second striker behind Watkins. I didn't expect him to play the 90 minutes that he did. I also felt like he's not going to get many attacking returns, but I kind of picked him over Winks, if you like. So for me, he was mm. like my eighth attacker that I thought was better. Mm. So I was actually yeah, a little bit yeah. annoyed that he looked so good against Arsenal when people brought him in. Obviously, he inevitably did nothing in the game. I actually started him. And um, yeah. I'm probably so, probably going to have him on my wild card, I think. He's just so good at that price that like now there is some stuff that in three to four weeks there is obviously some minutes that could go down with Buendia and his involvement. But I think oh, for okay. now, like there's like he's playing well enough where I just don't understand how he would lose his spot, basically. Like when they were trying to win games at one mm. one, he was the one who stayed for the whole 90 minutes. The only problem with Villa now is the Champions League. And I think mm. people are gonna have underestimated how the new format in the Champions League is going to affect not just them, but Liverpool, Arsenal, not so much City, because they've got an easy run of fixtures, I think. But um, I think people have underestimated what an effect it's going to have in terms of rotation and uh, that type of thing. So I'm a bit wary of Villa. I don't want um, the striker, Watkins, because I think the other one, I'd rather have the other one, I think, Duran. Almost. I think Just to have as like a third striker, right? I mean, he's got to have a start soon, hasn't he? And um, he's probably going to get it for the league games and rather than the Champions League matches. So, um, but it remains to be seen. But uh, he's playing really well. They really rate him as well, don't they? Yeah. No, no, he, he is exciting. Obviously, um, greenback goal for Luke. He came on the mm. channel a few weeks ago to talk about Villa, and he did say that with Champions League coming up, and I think it's maybe it's not common knowledge, but it appears that Watkins has been carrying like a knee injury the entire season. Something's but, not. Something. Yeah, something's not right. Not right. Yeah, hundred percent. Something's not right. So I do think that there is an opportunity for Duran to, like, mm. you know, he is the future of the club. I see some Villa fans; they actually rate him very highly. So with mm. Champions League, you know, we need to watch that. And if there's a world in which Watkins is starting Champions League week in, week out, and Duran starts playing in the Premier League, that would be very exciting. Um, so I'm keeping an eye on him. I just want to quickly timestamp this for the podcast listeners. So 47 minutes in, we have a graphic from um, FPL Under the Radar, these great guys, uh, American guys who do a podcast. They do really nice visualizations. And I asked if I could put this on the show. So just... This is expected goal involvements, game week one to three. It's really nicely laid out. There's different kind of shades of blue based on the uh, amount of the, their own team's expected goal involvements each players have. You can see Liverpool are on about 13 expected goal involvements on the season. Man City just under. Bournemouth is very high up. Um, probably a lot of that is Semenyo's 50 shots that he's taken. Man United's very high up, so you could argue some of those owners have been unlucky. Brighton is up there, Chelsea's up there, Aston Villa's there. Right at the bottom, there's um, the likes of Ips Ipswich Town, Vardy pretty much carrying Leicester. Crystal Palace haven't looked so good. No. Eze, Eze's had like maybe one and a half goal involved, expected goal involvement yeah. there, but they've not looked so great. Wolves, full I'm of not, Everton, not they're all the keen on, Not keen on Eze. So, yeah, what do you think about these guys? Is there anything. Because we won't spend long on this graphic. It's just here just as a nice visual and to shout out those guys. But um, is there anything here that maybe makes you think, oh, you know what? I've not considered this player for my wild card and maybe they're interesting. So like for me, Semenyo is someone where I feel like he was playing up front in a couple of these games or his stats skewed if he's not going to be playing up front anymore. So yeah, that kind of concerns me. Oh, is he not? Is he not going to be? Well, I, I don't know if he will. That's the thing, right? So it's just like, will that system mm. persist? And maybe someone in the chat knows Bournemouth better than I do. But yes, I mean, obviously, this is what based do you think? on this is based on what's happened over the first three weeks, isn't it? So you can't say you can't look at this and say it's going to remain the same. You know, it's obviously in a big state of flux, isn't it? But uh, Pedro's quite low down, isn't he, for Brighton? Mm. Yeah. So well, in Brighton, just for the podcast listeners, we have. Mitoma, no, Mente, and Wilbeck. All of them. Yeah, I'm have. thinking of thinking if I go do a short term punt on my wild card, it's going to be Wellbeck rather than Pedro. That's, um, I like that. I, like, I see a lot of people hating on Wellbeck. I think it's just because he's uh, price risen a bit. 
and they yeah, and he's a bit him. old, I suppose, isn't he? And but I mean, he's you know he's doing well, isn't he? I don't see why Pedro. I suppose Pedro's on penalties. I mean, if it had a penalty, he probably would have been much higher up on that list, wouldn't he? So I think there's only yes. been two penalties so far as well, right? I think it was the Haaland penalty. Yeah, only two. And one of them was missed, I think, wasn't it? Haaland's yeah, the only sure. one who scored one. Yeah, so like maybe that's also quite unusual. Like maybe there's normally more penalties by this stage. So like, you know, again, like would a lot of this change? Should we start to see more penalties? Yeah, but, but yeah, apparently they have changed the rules a little bit, haven't they? They're not going to I know they have on handball. They have on handball. Oh. Have you read that? Mm, so maybe um, there aren't going to be as many penalties. Because they've talked about, like, you know, like you, they've kind of said, like, we don't expect you to have your arms behind your back and play in this really mm. weird way just so it doesn't hit you. Yeah, kind of yeah. like, you know, as long as, like, other factors are taken in, like how close it is and some more common sense, I suppose. Um, but we won't stay here long because I know that we want to talk a little bit more about Chelsea and take live questions, but there's lots of them starred in the chat from them, lots of very patient viewers. This again, this is another graphic from Rob TFPR. I always like this one. It's just from the spread betting markets. Kind of shows the expected goals per game, clean sheet odds. The big call outs for podcast listeners are that Man City have the highest expected goals of the week on 2.95 in the bookies markets. Liverpool 2.8, Brighton 2.4, Aston Villa 2.15, Crystal Palace 2.0, Man United 1.95, Arsenal, no, Chelsea 1.95. Newcastle 1.85, Arsenal 1.8. So yeah, what are your thoughts here? Because there's been a lot of talk about why are people selling like Isaac? Why are people selling Saka? You're on a wild card, so I don't know if you intend on having an Arsenal attacker or keeping Isaac, who, who was in your team. I'm hoping but, like, Saka drops in price. Um, mind you, it doesn't really matter actually Saka's price, but um, I probably will keep Saka in my team, I think. Because of the game week, six fixtures improved, don't they? So... I'm still up in the air on Isaac Jackson. I'm looking at, and um, even um, the Everton striker, Calvert Lewin. I'm looking at as well. He, he's a um, he's someone who's slowly started being talked about as an option. The, um, thing is, if I get Rogers as my fifth midfielder, I'll be starting Rogers and putting Calvert Lewin on the bench because Everton have got some fantastic fixtures. And it's just a question of whether he can stay fit or not, I think. I think if he stays fit, he's going to do well. And Everton will turn around. I mean, this is an example of our three weeks in everyone's... I think it, Arsenal last year or a year before started really poorly in the season, didn't they? And it was before I was saying, came in. Arteta should be sacked and everything, and they end up in second place. So you can't go by Everton because they started awful, but they're not going to stay that way. Yeah, I'm just if looking at them in this graphic. Okay, so okay, so they've got Harrison, McNeil, Tarkovsky, and DCL for the goal involvements. But you would expect it to get better from here. Like they exactly. need to start improving quickly if they don't want to get mm. relegated. You'd you'd think the teams that have started badly are actually in some ways probably the teams to watch rather than the teams that have overperformed in the first three weeks that are going to drop off. It's not you, I don't think you can read too much into Bournemouth and um like I said, it's a very small sample, but um, Calvin Lewin's interesting, I think. He was on the he watch list. Him. Yeah, so he was on the watch list when Luke came on a few weeks back. I've mm. always had a soft spot for him. Um, I don't think now, but there was a period where when Watkins and Bamford and Calvin Lewin, they were all there. They were like getting close to 15 league goals. There was a period when Calvin Lewin really, you know, there were talks of him going to places like Arsenal for 100 million. like. Mm. There was a period when he really looked like he was going to be great. And I think he brings something special to that team, but it's just the staying fit part. I think that is definitely hit the nail on the head. And I also think he's also maybe not the player he was pre some of those injuries. So he's almost mm. like he wants to take the game and be the one to win it, but he's kind of taking shots that he's not able to finish. And I wonder if with the right coaching, was he like potentially able to just pass the ball a few of those times and, give it to someone else to finish because maybe he's not the same Calvert-Lewin as back then. But in terms of like as an aerial threat and like battling against two centre-backs, like I remember mm. watching him against Arsenal live and like he's just a fucking nightmare. Like you, you don't want to be dealing with this guy in the air. Like he just somehow always gets to the ball, knocks it down to his teammate. Like it's just super frustrating to play against. But 
I just think he lost a little bit of that magic after the injury. I don't know if it's confidence or he's scared of his own body getting injured again or what it is. But I, I really have a soft spot for him. I don't I don't understand the hate on him. Yeah, there's a good player in there. I think um, with the fixtures they've got, I think if he does stay fit, he, he will um, justify his price. You know, it's, for that price, there's not really any better options, I think, with the fixtures. It's hard to think of any. I mean, you've got Pedro, but Brighton have got bad fixtures coming up. In a it's just the weeks, two, isn't it? Know. It's kind of like the two fixtures for Brighton now. Mm. You almost need like an exit plan, potentially. Um, yeah, so I'd be avoiding on wildcard. So let's go to Chelsea, because I think a lot of people are interested on your opinion of Chelsea, of course. I know you said you might go with Palmer on the wildcard as opposed to um, Madueke, who was in your team pre-wildcard. There's a lot of talk about Nicholas Jackson as well at the moment. I know he's just extended and he's like got like a nine or ten year contract at this stage after the freaking extension. But um, they do seem to be putting the faith in the boy. And he's also another player I feel gets unfairly criticised. I think when mm. he was signed for Chelsea, right, he was a young striker who'd barely played any first team professional football yet in his career, apart from like yeah, maybe a right. dozen games. And he, he was never meant to come in and be the guy who drags you to top four or wins the league on day one. He was always meant to have like maybe another experienced striker that he could like learn from and be mentored by and eventually. And that That's pressure it. to be that guy for you from day one, to me, that just seems crazy. Like that, like to be judged by those standards at that age, I think that's totally unfair. He just came into a team full of kids, didn't he? And um, he had to go straight into the first team. And um, he misses a lot of chances, but he does get a lot of chances. I mean, he gets an awful lot. And um, he will improve, I think. You know, he's still doing all right this season, hasn't he? You know, he's got 18 points already, so he's averaging six points a game. And they played Man City. So did they play Man City? I think they did, didn't they? Yeah, they lost 2-0 yeah. in the first game. So he's got most of those points in the next two. So I'm, I'm thinking of putting Jackson in. If I've got the money, he'll be coming in. You know, I might have Isaac Jackson and Calvert-Lewin might be my front three, I think. I like so, that. I like that. Jackson, I was going to ask you about because I just feel like he, like, so I always look for opportunities, right? Like players that maybe people will avoid even if they return mm. a few weeks in a row because of previous trauma. And mm. like um, exactly. some reason, Darwin always gets brought back in despite years of trauma. And yet people yeah. aren't willing to give the same mindset to Jackson. So I feel like surely like that's a good thing. Because in FPL, right, these days, you said it yourself, as soon as a player returns points, even if they're a differential and that you get that exciting buzz and that amazing feeling that you mentioned, really, are they going to give you differential points value-wise more than two, three weeks of returning in a row? Probably by then it's like most people have them right especially if they're at a good exactly time. yeah yeah whereas with someone like jackson i feel like he could go under the radar in the sense that mm. even if he was to get points every week for like a month people yeah. will still avoid him because of their preconceptions and i don't know if, if i'm crazy to make that makes it more attractive for me you can see that now i mean he's got 18 points but nobody's really bringing him in are they yeah, I mean, I am, I'm going to probably, but um, most people aren't. It just continue to be ignored, and they've still got good fixtures. I'm just got no um, They have yeah, got it's Europe, but he's not going to be playing. He's not going to be playing in those um, conference league games. So, you know, those games they've got in their champ in their conference league are easier than their qualifying game. You know, they played uh, Servette or whoever it was to qualify. Who are a better team than most of the one teams that they're now playing. So um, they're going to be putting out a reserve team pretty much every week. So people are saying that they're avoiding Chelsea because they're very difficult to predict who's going to start. But I don't think it's the case, not, not any more than any other teams. I mean, you're pretty much going to get... Um, Palmer's going to be in the middle, I'd say. Madwaki will be on the right. Now, most of the time, you're going to have Neto on the left. Um, you know, um, what's his face? Mike? And the Kunku might get the odd game. I think Felix will be playing all the European games because he's eligible mm. now. He wasn't before for the other two-legged one they just had. So he'll be coming on for Palmer after about so many minutes or coming on for someone else. And 
Jackson will probably play most games. I think Nkunku is going to be playing most of the European games. I mean, he's looked awful, hasn't he, Nkunku? It's quite sad. Um, yeah, when he joined, I, I honestly, I had him in game week one, of course. And um, I think part of it was, I remember his days in the UCL fantasy for Leipzig. And he was a captaincy material every week. Mm. So it's, just, it's a shock. He doesn't, it. he doesn't fit in. I mean, Maresca likes proper wide wingers. And Nkunku's not one of them. So he's not going to start on the left very often. He's number 10, but so is Palmer, really, isn't it? Palmer's going to be there. So um, he's not going to be a striker. He's not really a very good striker. I mean, they've tried him, but he, he's not, not the best. So um, unless Palmer's injured or something like that, then I can't see him getting a run of games. Is it a system thing then? Because th there were some games last season, right, where he did come on, he had cameos and... He still wasn't playing many minutes, but there was occasion moments where I saw like that brilliance, like that really fancy, tight, close footwork. And like, I didn't feel anyone else in the team could do what he was doing. Like he would be in the box with like three defenders on top of him and he'd still somehow get off and get the pass to the person to shoot or get the shot off. But it just didn't quite materialize. Like it was all kind mm. of what was the saying, all fart and no poo. Like, but there was just those moments of glimpses of, oh my God, like this is the Nkunku I remember. And it just feels like now there's a new manager, there's a different system and he just doesn't fit into it, which is quite sad. Mm. If Palmer wasn't around, he might. But um, with Palmer there, I mean, it's all about Palmer, isn't it, really, that team? And um, they've got all those European games, so he's going to be playing in those, isn't he? I think Palmer's so, not even registered for the European squad. So yeah, no, he's not even registered yeah. exactly. So he's not going to play any of them. So it, it couldn't so, get any better. So we've got some questions actually in the Q and A about the defend, do you prefer defend, Palmer or Saka. I'll just quickly talk about defence. Yeah, think. let's talk about Chelsea um, defence. I'll tell Colwell, you. Colwell's pretty nailed, I think. Mm -hmm. Four point five. I don't think Cucurella's worth five million. Mm -hmm. Um, Gusto was really good last season, but he's not looking as good in this new system. So, um, he used to be where Madwaki is now. Gusto would have been last season, you know, up there. But, um, I think Colwell, if you must have a Chelsea defender, and it looks like they're settled on Sanchez and goal now. Would you want a Chelsea defender? I guess, is my question. Um, yeah, exactly. I, I'm not sure I would. I'm not, I'm not planning on getting one. Because people said, like, if Sanchez nails down the spot, you know, he's the best 4.5 million defender, etc. cetera, or goalkeeper. I just don't think I want to go anywhere near the Chelsea defence. Um, what about Reese James? I hear there's talks that he might be uh, returning to fitness while Gusto's out no, soon. Is he, um, he going to one last rodeo? <laughs> I think even if he does, he's not going to be playing in the same position as he was. So he's not going to be as productive, I think. Fair enough. Um, so the top three, would you say those, the ones who've got the points so far, and they've got significantly more points than the rest of the Chelsea boys? Yeah, they're, the only three, they're the only three to consider for FPL, I think. Unless something like materially changes, right? Like if if, if Palmer was injured and then Kuku suddenly playing mm. every week as a 10. Yeah. Maybe we'll change the order. I think Palmer's the one you want, isn't he? Then Jackson, then Mad Wakey. I think I agree. I think Jackson, I really like as well. I think Jackson, I'm warming up on him thanks to what you said. Um, so in terms of then just predicted points on Chelsea real quick, um, this is the next eight game weeks from game week four to game week 11. And it, and it has them in the exact order, right? So Is this uh, FPL review? Is it one of those? No, no, this is from Hub's predicted points. But because um, I have like, you know me, I have membership to like every possible tool out there. I, I just love data and then I ignore it basically because I like to do stupid uh, transfers based on gut feeling and finger in the air. But I still like to see the data. Um, so yeah, Palmer's obviously predicted the most points, like 51 points in that period. Jackson, 40 points, Madueke, 34 points. And then it kind of really quickly drops. It like goes down to like Enzo. Like I ain't looking to buy him. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, I think at this stage, it is really just a top three. Madueke is a bit hit and miss um, unless you're hotter on his expected minutes than most. I must players. say I'm a bit biased when it comes to Chelsea. I mean, 
part of my reason for wild carding was just because I wanted to get Palmer in. So, um, you know, and I am biased. I mean, we I think we had before the season that Newcastle fans telling everyone that Hall was going to play and um, all these things. So you can't, I think you should take a pinch of salt what supporters of a club have to say because they do tend to be biased, you know. So um, if you get Mad Wake in and he's no good, don't blame me, peeps, because... Uh, it's not my fault. You've given you, the disclaimer. You picked him. <laughs> Take your own. Uh... <laughs> I love that. You know, but, um, I like him. But um, I'm going to be annoyed, actually, because I know I'm not going to have him on my wild card because I've got Palmer. And I can see him scoring again this week. And I'm, my old team's going to outscore my new team and it's going to wipe me up no end. That's always a killer on wild card, <laughs> isn't it? So much stress. They're, they're, they're very much a double-edged sword, aren't they, wild cards? They really are. You know, people say you don't need to use it, you're wasting it. But often you will, even if you do need it, you can end up like totally killing your season, can't you? They're very, very much a double-edged sword. So uh, in a way, you I remember the like... season when people sold Salah after many blanks while carded him out and you got like 21 points or something. It, it just yeah. It's like you hold on for all the blanks. And then the week yeah. you finally wildcard the entire old team outscores, as you say, outscores the new. It's just like a kick in the face. It's really. How do you stay motivated in that scenario? Because it must it's happen. It's like Fernandez in owners, isn't it? Oh yeah, they're still waiting. Um, they're telling me, like Simon said yesterday on the expected grass episode. Obviously, um, from an analytics point of view, he's everything you want, right? Like ninety minutes playing as the ten, like creative hub of United penalties, like on paper like even his underlying numbers you see what he did for portugal you're like holy shit goal and assist and then it just like, match. Yeah. And you come back to man united and you're like everyone's telling me like oh he's a season hold whereas i just really didn't want to have it like i remember the start mm. of the season i was like i just can't i just can't do it like like it, it just feels like he makes sense on paper yeah I just don't rate the way man united play football and i don't know if that's bias but i just i really think ten hog does not know what he is doing or how to get the best out of his team i'm actually thinking of buying him <laughs> <laughs> i'm actually thinking of getting him on my wild card to be honest you're becoming more analytics by the day since this concert dunk wings video <laughs> i did i didn't want him at the start of the season because i know because i'm quite price conscious and i knew that this might happen what's happened and i know from last year how hard he is to get rid of once you own him. Because he, he always, always looks, looks like he's going to get points. <laughs> and he's so hard to take out. Because he is going to get points, isn't he, at some stage. And I've just got a feeling it's this week. So I am quite tempted to bring him in. But um, I want to see another price fall first before I do bring him in. I don't Fair want to I'm not, I won't, I won't bring him in if he's like minus 90%. <laughs> So that's my problem with Isaac too. If he's at like minus ninety eight percent and losing owners, it pretty much rules me out of bringing him in. That's me. That's sort of crazy. You have thing. to wait, right? You have to wait, and then mm. when the price drop happens, now you buy them at like the the, the discount yeah. aisle in the supermarket. That's right, because um, Fernandez he is he's a he's, he's definition of a trap, isn't he? In a way, I, I watched Andy FPL stream before the start of the season. He's like. Well, shall I get Fernandez? Shall I not get Fernandez? Because he, you know what he's like. He, he can just keep blanking. Because once you have him, you just never want to sell because he always mm. looks good. He always mm, looks exactly. like he's going to return. And We're for very some lucky reason, you, know, you get unlucky or lucky, right? Mm. But he should have had a lot of points. I mean, not only is quite lucky. Game week one, I mean, how he missed those chances is just unbelievable. So actually going back to this, yeah. So Man United, uh, fourth highest for expected up, goal involvement, up, and Bruno's got the most out of the entire team. <laughs> and they do. Ganacho actually is a good pick too, isn't he? Really, I think. I really like Ganacho. If he's going to six point five, yeah. If he's going to play, that Diallo putting me off a bit because he's looking good as well, isn't he? But you can't really pick him because you don't know if he's going to play. Is Ganacho going to play all the time? I don't know. If he is, you would he's hope probably so. a better pick. He's probably a better pick than Fernandez, isn't he? When you look at that chart, there's not much between them. And he's so but much two cheaper. million, yeah. Two million mm. cheaper at least, right? Um, yeah. 
I'm just going to quickly go to some Q&A as well. Um, before that, I just want to put up FPL Frazzle's comment that Madu Eke is great cover if you can't get to Palmer, but rotation risk compared to Jackson as the Cole yeah. alternative. Who there is a bit. I mean, we don't know 100%, do we, that Palmer's always going to be in the middle. I mean, he mm. could play some games on the right. And maybe Nkunku will get a game in the middle. Or um, Felix could get a game in the middle and Palmer on the right. So we don't know. I mean, he's a pretty strict manager, I think, Maresca, isn't he? So Madwake is a bit of a character. So, I mean, he could easily fall foul of a manager at some stage. And Imagine just one bench. bad incident. Um, the old um, Chesney and Jack Wilshire smoking cigarettes in the shower after mm. a game and Wenger finding them. I, I can imagine certain players are more prone to do the kind of shit that the discipline yeah, exactly. the is not happy about. <laughs> yeah. And I think oh. Maresca... Maresca is like a mini pep, I think. He'd be looking for a way to impose his discipline on somebody. So, um, yeah, so you can never tell with Palmer because he does play those two positions, doesn't he? So uh, the good thing with Palmer is you know he's always going to be playing. So it makes him so much better than any of the other assets, I think. Although I he is quite expensive, isn't he? he I is was going to expensive. buy him. My plan was this week originally to do Isaac to Pedro to fund Gordon to Palmer. And that was kind of my plan for the last few weeks going into it. And then I don't know if I'm being delusional, but I kind of saw the next two Chelsea games were away. And I thought the next one, Bournemouth, maybe isn't as easy as it seems. No. And then I, and then I was like, do I want <laughs> two away fixtures? Do I wait a little bit more? Maybe I buy Palmer in mm. game six. So now I'm like, I've kind of gone against it. I've decided actually... It I probably really is more Palmer. sensible to wait. You would say I'd so, say but I guess if you're on well. wildcard, though, you don't want to book in mm. that transfer, right? That's the thing. No, if, if you're on wildcard, you get him on your wildcard, I think. But otherwise, you're quite happy to wait, aren't you, really? I mean, I can't wait. if you've yeah, got I Saka, if you've got a lot of people are selling Saka and buying Pam, aren't they? People not on wildcard, just Saka's got two tough fixtures. Um, Rice and Odegaard out is going to make a big difference, don't you think, for... We're going to talk. That's the first question in the Q and A. Yeah. So let's save that one. Yeah. So um, we'll, well, we'll about talk that. about that. We'll talk about. <laughs> let's say let's say thank you to all the members, and then we'll go straight into the um, the impact on Arsenal, I guess, of these injuries and suspensions. I think that's a good good thing to go to. So thank you to all the key holders, as they're now called, no longer haulers, as we become uh, locked in FPL and the four seasons of net that haul is behind us. And thank you everyone for all the years of sticking with us. So our master key holders on YouTube are Greenback Golf, Gary Horwood, David Harrison, Nehal, Colm, Line. Oh, God. I've made it so small I can't see. Apologies. Let me make that bigger. Yeah. Lion Pedersen, FPL Sparta, and Tiggy Taylor. Our key holders, Podner, Kevin Rose, Blonde, FPL Teacher, Tom, Lindsay O, Dom, Claire, Tursk, Scaffrine, Harry Not Kane, Benjamin Lockwood, FPL Discomfort, Grady, Jasper and Singh, FPL Eric, BW Spitter, and the FPL Juice Show. Last but not least, our Patreon key holders, Elron, FPL California, Mike Burke, Draft Alchemy, and Dr. Green Thumb. Thank you all for supporting the channel. Um, there's a lot of new master key holder members who are not in the Discord. So please DM me on Twitter if you've not figured out how to join. But if you're a member on Patreon or YouTube, you simply just need to go to the profile settings in Discord and log in with the same Google account that you use for your YouTube membership, and it will drop you into the locked in FPL Discord server automatically. With that in mind, um, if you've enjoyed today's show, we want to firstly thank Nick. I'll be putting links to his profile, Trigger Lips, as he's otherwise known on Twitter and X. Please do go and follow him. Also check out his channel where he told me he wasn't going to make content this season and then made the infamous uh, Dunk Console Winks video. So it's good that you're back. <laughs> do you plan to do it every week, Nick? Or was it just... Like um one time yeah possibly depends what mood i'm in i don't like to um have to force myself to do fpl content there's something gets my interest when i go and do one. i haven't done one this week because i was on your show and i thought oh, i'll just come on now i won't do my own one this week especially when i'm on a wild card i don't really i don't really like doing the videos where you serious fpl type stuff but i don't really give out advice too much that type of thing i prefer if something happens on twitter go on make a pod about it sort of do a pod on what's happening in the community type thing is more uh, the ones i enjoy doing really so uh, 
it'd be whenever and i just put a link up on twitter and people can go they're usually nice and short aren't they and uh they're sweet yeah they're so good they're just like candid and it's like when you have something on your mind you just want to get off your chest i really like yeah, the yeah. sofa that you're on i think there's a comment in the chat actually that i starred <laughs> about this so let me quickly find that so bw splitter said we need to normalize creating content from a lounging position nick is so relaxed and i'm here for it <laughs> yeah no, you have no, no one lounges more than me i'm normally horizontal on this thing and laptop laptop literally on my lap and uh <laughs> yeah. you, you know what actually um, i'm gonna play your video before the q well, i'm off to, play, off to play golf after this so i've got a nice relaxing day ahead lovely stuff <laughs> let, let me um let me play this video for the um for the guys in the chat and then we'll do like 10 minutes of q a and we'll let you get out of here so oh, it's no, no rush i'm quite happy to nice one. well i guess as long as the questions are there guys nick will be here yeah. right so just keep sending questions yeah. um so guys, this video is from a few seasons ago. It was Nick's first ever appearance on back then Net That Hall. And um, he came on to the Compass show, as we called it, with me and Hibbo. And it was a live FPL match that evening. And there was a guy who uh, scored, who the masses were buying every week just because he scored the week before. And to just please just watch that the first minute or so of this video. It's a three-minute video, so I won't play the whole thing. But I'll play like the first minute or so. I just want you guys to see like, what FPL does to us. And seeing Nick like that, like it just reminds me of myself when like, I'm annoyed at FPL and ju just look at Hibbo and the way he's crying and look at Nick and the way he's drinking his water with pure psychopathic rage. Um, I hope you guys in the chat, if you've not seen this before, this is one of my favorite moments of the last five seasons. <laughs> so check this out for the next minute and then we'll, we'll come to the Q&A. And he's getting his goals and assists. Go oh, 3-1. Hold oh, up. Don't know this is getting the fucking annoying. I, but I, think it's, dry. I think it's the Corey. Again, no, no, gray, gray. so I've got him in oh, sky. Fuck okay. <laughs> oh no, that's going to damage my FPL rank, though. You're oh, right. Whatever score. happens, it's so sad when our FPL is more important than fan team. That's Can't devastating. Next on top, LiveFPL.net is going to crash. Let's have a look. Oh wow, the average and the safety score have gone way up. <laughs> Having D Sarah out and then having that prick gray score, it's just like <laughs> it's ruined my fucking day, though. <laughs> you know, you get it's ten, ruined my all, day too, to be fair. All, all ten midfielders blank, don't they? And you just know that fucking gray is gonna come along and fuck up your gray week game. On a Monday like night. <laughs> Except all the pricks on Twitter who've all got him. That's Everyone's only people you were everyone 99% of people posting on Twitter tonight will have him. All, all the, the wild rest, card is all the rest will have turned off. Or game week four, is it? Yeah, all the game week four wild card is having all, all the ones that just got grey because everyone else was and like you got a goal the week before, you know, the depth of their analysis. And ah, oh, it's tough. And then he got him because it's the only one they could afford to get because they were getting Ronaldo, you know. Do you know who the next one is though? Gallagher. So I always say if you look at the transfers. Game with four wild card. Wow, this yeah, is that's what I just saw that. I was like thinking, shit, this is a bit of deja vu going on. So I mentioned DCL in that as well, didn't I? DCL was out apparently, and it was yeah. a game week four wild card. And here we are, game week four. I'm talking about bringing DCL in. So I don't know where that prick Gray is now. Do you? I, don't, I think he's gone to like <laughs> is Saudi. Still, is he still playing? I don't know where he's gone, but that was incredible because it was a Monday night. And I remember, like, I think we both had green arrows, right? Yeah, and yeah. Chris Foster a good game, game scored. <laughs> Just a straight red arrow instantly. <laughs> That's the trouble oh. with those Monday night games, isn't it? It was like Salah last week. Yeah, like, absolutely. Really on the last game. game. You just can't count your chickens, can you? So good. I, I think I I'd, enjoy FPL, I'd enjoy FPL a lot more if I just turned off for tv at the weekend and just watch the highlights i think <laughs> I, <love that. laughs> I was thinking man. what you were saying earlier about people how you enjoy fpl i think the best way is to just concentrate on your work mini league isn't it really it's um the ones that work that i work with i enjoy fpl a lot more than i do i think just talking about the mini league and ribbing each other after the game week for us, it's like a complete nightmare, isn't it? You get people like that bloody grey and um, every week someone comes along and ruins your bloody game, right? 
every week without <laughs> fail, man. So Elrond Cupboard says you could rock that shirt, chain, and chest hair combo again. Um uh, Bateman says Nick Furious in his England cricket team hat. Long. He's still got the same hat on. It's all very worrying. This all deja vu <laughs> thing coming up. I've got the same bloody hat on. We're bringing DCL in on a game week four wild card. And Jesus. It's all going to come <laughs> crashing down, Nick. Um, I, I think I can, you might get triggered into making a video. Harlan, I've been looking at Salah and Harlan combos. I might go over Salah Harlan. But I want, the trouble is, I want Salah Harlan and Palmer. And I'm, I really, but I just can't squeeze them in. That's, I might be able to if I put. Uh, Rogers in as a fourth, as a fourth I with mean. another cheap fifth, and then Having maybe Winks you have as well. defenders, right? So got Dunk, Conser, Winks, and Rogers. But I like, like, I I like I'm worried. That. I'm worried about the Champions League, but I think Rogers is a pretty fit-looking character, isn't he? He, he looks think, good to me. He looks I don't good. think he's the sort of player that's going to need to be rested. Do you know what I mean? He's. I think he'd be able to cope with playing. Two games a week. I mean, he's young, isn't he? And um, I think, like you play. said, yeah, should still play both games. I think, but I think it's the defense, right? So, can you go back to like you know the screenshot from your game with one team in 2014? It's like if you can get comfortable with a 4.5 million and 4 million defense, I do think maybe there's a world you can have. Yeah, I'm worried about Palmer, Holland. Maybe you can go with that Trent, but um, he looks so. I mean that's the way. I, that's the, that's the sacrifice I have to make if I want that team is to get rid of Trent. And, and it's um, tough, right? Because he looked like he's ready to he just explode. Looks so good. And when I'm playing FPL now, I've decided one of the reasons I don't want Haaland is I want to enjoy my weekends watching the players. You know, I don't like watching Chelsea without Palmer. It actually ruins my enjoyment of watching Chelsea not having Palmer in my team. And I want to enjoy my FPL. So even though it might not be um, optimal, I want to have Palmer. I want to have Salah. I don't like City anyway. I'm quite happy. I'm with you, Nick. I'm not with you. Like, City. I want players no, I, I want to enjoy watching. Like, I'll yeah. watch games I've never watched in my life or would never watch if I didn't have an asset in that game. Yeah, I don't want to have to watch. Sorry, Forest supporters, but I don't want to have to watch Forest. Well, Just Morgan Gibbs White. Is that why you are carded? It was bloody Morgan painful. Is. Yeah, exactly. It was painful watching them. I know he got a goal the other week, but I want to watch Blooming Liverpool having Salah and Trent. I want to watch Chelsea having Palmer. I want to watch Arsenal We're having good Arsenal players. I don't want to have to Blooming watch Nottingham Forest or all these teams. And, you know, it's painful, painful. You don't want to so watch that's... Switch Town for Ben Johnson. Although it has been quite nice being able to watch City with Haaland, to be honest. But um, someone's got to go, and I'm thinking it's going to be Haaland. Because I think in a few weeks, too, there's going to be um, alternatives to Haaland in that City team. You know, um, once um, what's his face comes back, who will my Foden. Oh, Foden? Yeah, Foden comes back, or even De Bruyne, you know, is an option. I think it's been. Slightly ignored, isn't he, De Bruyne? He he's looked very I good. Mean, I think there's a case. You know, I mean, his. maybe I should be getting De Bruyne instead of Palmer, even or you know. But like I said, I want to have players that I like watching, and having Palmer is kind of. I just don't enjoy my watching Chelsea so much when I haven't got Palmer in my team. So um, I'm interested in that though, because I like. Let's say, for example, I've sold Saka this week, and I, I intend on getting him back in game week six, but. I actually, like, don't mind. Like, when Arsenal keep clean sheets and their, like, defensive effective ownerships, like, 200%, I don't care about the red arrow because I'm, like, I'm glad Arsenal won. So it's interesting because you have a slightly different take to me where if Palmer got a hat-trick, it kind of actually ruins watching your team for you. Whereas for me, I'd be like, oh, okay, like, FPL's fucked, but at least Saka got a hat-trick and Arsenal won. It's funny. We're both, like, view it uh, differently, don't we? It's not other people having him that annoys me. It's just the fact I haven't got him. I can't okay. celebrate in quite the same way as That's I would if I had him in my team. So, would you ever root against a clean sheet? So, have you ever like gone into a game where you're thinking, you know what, like, I, I like you're winning, let's say three nil, and then you're like, 
oh, I don't have any Chelsea defenders and they've got high ownership. Fuck it, we need to concede a goal. Oh, yeah, I don't care about them keeping a clean sheet or not. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. Obviously, obviously, don't want them not to win, but um, I don't care if they keep a clean sheet. If they win 4 1, I'm happier than if they win 4 0. If I haven't got any. No, no, I asked because there was an incident on Twitter recently where someone was like celebrating Salah destroying their team. Um, and people were like, wait, don't you support the team that just got spanked? Like, what the hell? And they were like, yeah, over would my team. Okay, you wouldn't go that far. Fair enough. Let's go to um, quickly the Discord question before this Twitter question. And then I've got nine starred questions from the YouTube. So Dom Black Dragon on Discord asked, I'll timestamp this one hour 25. Dom asked, game week six to 19, which is the best set and forget between Saka and Palmer? Is there a hop on and hop, hop off in between them? Well, I don't have the uh, fixtures in front yeah, of Yeah, I don't have the fixtures that far ahead, but I'm going <laughs> to just open them up real quick uh, in the background and maybe I'll put it on the share it's screen. It's interesting. So can... I, I'd say... um, probably Saka, I'd say. From a pure FPL perspective... Oh, I don't know, though. No, I don't know. It's yeah, I'm going to put them up for you on screen. I'm, I'm going to slightly more screen. expensive partner, isn't he? But uh, they're both on penalties. Here we go. Let's try this. Okay, so I might need to zoom in or something, but let, let's get. Oh, I've zoomed in on the wrong place. You'd think over that long time frame, they're all going to have pretty equal sort of fixtures, aren't they? And you'd say so, but Chelsea's, oh, I guess, a similar number of goals. What week are we talking? Six to 19. Yeah, I've put six to 19. Let me just switch it to attack. It has Arsenal top for attack for that period. Um, it has Chelsea like halfway down, but the goals for no, like, no away at Liverpool, away at Man United, they got Arsenal. Tottenham away is not, not that bad. Hard. Chelsea's fixtures, though. They're not, not that bad. bad. What are Arsenal's bad fixtures here, though? There's like Bournemouth away, Newcastle away, Chelsea away. I can see why. Home. Like Arsenal home does have like very good home fixtures apart from me. To be Liverpool. honest, I'd say you want both of them. Man City, interestingly, are below Chelsea in that period, but there's nothing really in it. That's the other reason I don't like this kind of stuff, right? Because here yeah. in Chelsea are going to get 22.9 goals and Arsenal are going to get 23.7. Yeah, there's nothing in it. I mean, there's it's nothing just a guess in it. anyway, isn't it? Pure guesswork. Really? And that will really? change. Okay. I, yeah, I wouldn't look beyond, um, I'd say, three to six week horizon. I, I, when I buy players, I normally buy them with a view to start them for like four to six weeks. That's kind of why I'm buying them. And if they blank, I try to remind myself as has anything changed in the reasoning why I bought them? Because if nothing's changed, I'm just going to keep playing them until I get to the point that I knew I was going to. Because I'm a fixtures manager. So I don't want to sell someone after having made a decision that this is the period I want them for just because they've blanked, if that makes sense. But um, let's go to this question because this is um, an interesting and Harland's insane well. though, isn't it? We don't know how good Harland is this year, though, do we? I mean... Yeah. He could genuinely have gone up to a level that we've never seen. <laughs> it's scary to think, isn't it? It is scary to think. I mean, he, you know, I'm probably not going to have him on more work, but even having him hasn't really done me any good, much good. Do you know what I mean? People without him are doing just as well. But that's People nice, really. right? Because it means there are differences in the teams, at least. And it, and it means that he has to kind of be on that level just to be worth it. So if he does dip, then um, not having him is going to be the play, isn't it? I mean, can he sustain that level of performance? You'd think not. But, I um, think not, but like, he looks like, I don't know, there's like a new system at City if they stick to this mm. system. Like he looks like he's in, maybe he's fitter or in better shape than last year or something. Yeah. Like, Mentally, he's had the whole summer off, well, right? Like, it's, yeah. something's mentally different about him, for sure. It feels like that. But I think once Foden comes back, that might impact on Haaland's points, I think. Let's keep and there's Champions out, League as well. Champions League coming up. So, he didn't look that great for Norway, though, did he? So, yeah, I like you said, it's the way, City are, the way City are set up get the best out of him right um let's say this question from kanji um i'll put it at one hour 29 we'll start with the twitter one and then i've got like another five or six comments just to read out from the live chat tonight 
So Kanji asks um, about like the Arsenal impact of um, Odegaard's injury, missing Leicester, Southampton. It looks like he's going to miss like until after the next international break, but let's wait and see. And maybe four Premier League games, three cup games. He says, would you still trust Arsenal to score three or four goals in those games? Havertz maybe moved into midfield. Jesus or Trossard maybe getting minutes as striker. So I agree. I think Jesus or Trossard will get minutes as striker. You may see Sterling start a game at some point from left wing. Some people have him as striker this week. I, I don't think so. I think Arsenal personally will play a double pivot of Party and Jorginho in the North London derby with Havertz filling in the Odegaard role, playing as like a 10 or a number eight that floats into 10. And I think the front three will be Saka, Jesus and Martinelli, personally. Um, you could say it might be Saka, Trossard and Martinelli if Jesus isn't ready, but it sounds like he's fit for the North London derby, Jesus. So I just don't see why he wouldn't start striker. I can't um, see Sterling starting. Yeah, I don't think he'll be thrown in like that, but some people no. are maybe optimistic. Um, I think he's going to take time and maybe yeah, take minutes off he... others. He didn't even play in any of Chelsea's games, I think, pre-season or anything. So he's got to be built up. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But what do you? So what do you? Because my thing is right. A lot of people have been telling me like Havertz, like his appeal goes if he's playing in midfield, and you know his numbers last season. It took him twenty games to score for Arsenal. But then when you look at his numbers mm. as a striker in twenty twenty four onwards, it's like top five in Europe in every league, and it's insane. Yeah. Numbers. Um, maybe, I, maybe I'm I think, underestimating him. I, I think they are, right? So I, do you know why I say that? Because I think people forget that when he maybe was playing at left centre mid, he was playing with Eddie and Ketia as striker, not Gabriel yeah. Jesus. And Jesus drops deep a lot. And I think he's going to want to, like Havertz is going to push up into that position anyway. So I think he's still going to, when we have the ball, he's going to still basically be playing striker and get a few shots off a game. It's just out of possession he will obviously potentially be there doing a lot of defensive work. But I don't, mm. I don't personally think him playing from midfield if he does for a few games because of Odegaard's injury is the worst thing. And I don't think Arsenal are going to stop scoring goals because of this. Um, I think something might change. The system might, something exciting might happen. People are talking about like the youngster Ethan Nawaneri coming in at 17 to replace Odegaard. Like all kinds of weird ideas. People talking about Palafuri or Timber playing in a pivot next to party the other one playing a left back there's all kinds of wild speculation i would just wait and see and personally i don't think this dampens the appeal of habits for me at all at all like i'm not concerned in any way i don't know you you oh. know him from his time with you guys i do think he's improved a lot and gained confidence since but i don't know if you have a different view i, I think it will impact him for the next game or two with rice missing as well i think it is going to impact the team I think with Rice missing next game too, but like but, but they're talking look, about Southampton and Leicester in four weeks' time. Like Rice will be Yeah, long I haven't even looked at habits, to be honest with you, on my wild card, but I probably should do. I mean, there's going to be a very good option. But for people that are going without Haaland and have got space for like two or three decent priced strikers, I think um, the likes of habits. If he does do well, I'm hoping he does do well because he's going to be, you know, he's going to be a really good player to bring in, isn't he? And um, people were, you know, a lot at the moment, people have got that structure where they've got Haaland and they've got a Pedro or somebody like that in the team. And it's going to be difficult for them to fit in the likes of habits. So um, if he does do well, I'm hoping he does because he's a nice route into that Arsenal side, isn't he? I honestly, I, I've been saying all season, like, I want double attack. I don't want double defence. And I want Havertz mm. and Saka. Like, those are the I, two I want. I can see why people aren't really interested. Because he was a midfielder last year, wasn't he? So it kind of puts people off. Mm. You know, because we did, let's be honest, we didn't even want him last year. Did we? I think as on one of his shows mentioned bringing Havertz in. And he got laughed at, you know, by my... He got laughed at when he captained Bruno Gamaris <laughs> for a brace too, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> but then um, he turned out to be a really good pick in the end, didn't he? Yeah, yeah I, I think you're right. In the immediate future, maybe okay. Like, yeah, there will be yeah, some I think so. of impact. Yeah, you you are but right, but I just think it's not as bad as people think. I think Saka's going to be, you know, Tottenham. They'll find a way to score against Tottenham, won't they? I'm seeing Tottenham fans predicting a three-one loss despite all these injuries. So, like, I oh, don't really? Know, like, yes, yeah, so I don't yeah, know, not, man. Like. <laughs> They're not keen on their own defence, are they? 
Um, they, I think it will be an exciting game. Like the last few years, the North London derby has been insane. Like it's so much fun. Um, I always feel so sick leading up to it. It's just it's the one game that I I don't look forward to in a way because you're just on edge. It's like you know that you have this group of people waiting with a knife in your back. It's like <laughs> social media will be. I'm back. I should log out of Twitter for a week if we lose. Like um, it's that bad. But, I'm um, playing. <laughs> <laughs> Poro, I'm playing. And... I'm playing Poro. I don't have a choice, man. I've yeah. got Poro and Quanta. It's very attacking returns, isn't it? I don't... Poro, I mean, he looks like scoring all the time. And um, I'm, I think I will get Saka on my wild card. There's no point not getting him and then bringing him in game week six. You know, if, you, if you're going to get him, you just get him, I think. Because it's not that bad a fixture, is it, away at Tottenham? I think that's the good fixture, if in reality. Mm, so do I, like... yeah. We, we saw the numbers, right, from... Um, I mean, you know he's going to put in 150% against Tottenham, isn't he? So Yeah, um, like we've seen here 1.8 projected goals. Like, okay, like maybe it's not like as high as some of the other teams this week, like City and uh, Liverpool. I mean, who but, else do you get? But... I guess this is actually a good comment because Danish says, should I do Saka to Palmer? And like looking at this on paper, like I would argue the Bournemouth away is not that great personally um you obviously might disagree but there's not much difference when you look at the, the predicted goals is a that pretty is that even right like it's looking at a 2-1 win for chelsea 2-1 win for arsenal mm. that's kind of what it's projecting um yeah I, I i don't think i would do that this week personally um I was going to do Gordon to Palmer and I actually did Saka to Salah instead because I just wouldn't people, get too hard. People, people focus too much on the short term, I think, don't they? I think Saka, I said it at the start of the season. That's why I'm kind of like pissed that I sold him this week. I don't know why I did that. I was panicking about prices. Um, I've taken him out too, which is annoying. That's why he needs to drop in price. Otherwise, I have to bring him back for, for more than you. More than I could yeah. take him out. No, he will drop before the end of your wildcard window, I mm. think. But... Um, I just like when I looked at the season, right? So my view, and I stand by this, is that at the end of this season, Saka won't be very different from Haaland and Salah's final points tally. I think he'll be there in the top three points returns. He costs two and a half million less than Salah, five million less than Haaland. I just don't see a world in which he isn't going to be there in those top point scorers. Personally, I agree. I actually so looked at it. Feels like a bargain. Left Salah out. Maybe Salah will score more than him, but um, I, I think, think Saka, you just put him in. He's a season keeper. He's like the definition of a season keeper, I think, Saka, isn't he? I honestly think he is, which is why now, if I hear the concert injury is really bad and I'm then looking at my double move, I'm like, you know what? I'm doubting what I did now. Because what I've done is just for two weeks, I've almost locked myself into game week six wildcard because I've basically taken players who have two away games in... Um, Arsenal and Newcastle assets and replace them both with two players who have two good home games. So I've kind of got yeah. very short term, try to get yeah. the most I can and wild card into the team I want. But if there's a few more injuries come deadline, I might yeah, enough wild card. wild carding in a couple of weeks. If you know you're going to wild card, then you do think short term, don't you? So, so everyone's, armor every, rested. everyone's focusing on this game week six wild card, aren't they? Like everyone. I was I didn't want to force my I wanted to go as long as I could without but mm. then I've kind of forced my own hand this by not rolling my transfers and making these rash short term moves. Um Donna says Palmer rested. Should we take that into account? I think like I don't think he's intense. injured or anything, is he? There was a slight chat. He pulled out and I think it was he's been in training. So like he's back in really? full training. He's back in full I've training. got I've got to disappear to the loo for a sec. I'll be back in a Yeah, you know, go for it. I'm gonna answer there's a couple of questions as we come back. Oh. So Ignatius asks, if not going Salah, who would you captain in game week five? So let me just have a real quick look, buddy, at the game week five fix. So we have... Okay, cool. So you don't have Salah. I would personally... Well, like I have Jota as a non-Salah owner. I don't know if you have that, Ignatius. Let me know. Um, alternatively, Palmer away at West Ham. Jota at home to Bournemouth. Any Spurs players? I don't know if you fancy a Kyungmin Sun purchase. Not for me. Man United, Bruno away at Palace. Not not ideal. It sounds oh, a bit... Yeah, what, what do you think about this one? Um, 
Game week five's matchups don't look great. And um, Ignatius wants to know if they didn't have Salah, who would you captain? I'll put uh, the game week five fixtures on the screen so you can see. Well, I, I've I've looked at a wild card without Salah and without Haaland. <laughs> and my main problem with it was trying to find someone to captain. And um, what's wrong with... Oh, he doesn't, doesn't have Salah, does he? So... Captain. Yeah, yeah. So they're just saying, like, if I don't, yeah, like, like I was saying to them that um, I would say, like, maybe you have Jota, maybe you have Palmer, maybe you even go for like Brighton. There's nobody, is there? There's Brighton. If you I if think, you're confident, I someone's going to start. I think you captain Haaland, don't you? Yeah, I guess at home. If it was away, that would be different. I think. Yeah, if you don't have Salah, I assume you have Haaland. I think you can captain Haaland in any. Oh, way. Palmer, maybe. No, I think Haaland sensible one probably oh hang on villa but again like is watkins like someone that he's yeah, got or is, is he gonna have like you're not gonna captain rogers um and he's got and he's got the champions league too. we just don't know do we have I, I can see emery's gonna take the champions league very seriously isn't he he's a he's a very european focused manager you know what's funny i've, I've just realized um he does well in europe i think his 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 teams have won uh he, yeah, that is something he loves to do, isn't it? So we've got to be careful with what he might do with them in that might prioritize yeah. it at some point. Even Rogers is a tiny bit of a worry, okay. But I think he should be all right, I think. So if you well, would if you, you captain Trent? Trent? Player, would you captain Trent? Would yeah, Captain Trent. I would captain Trent. Oh, I don't know though. They've got Europe as well. I it's all it's all it's all very scary with these extra European ties. But Trent's going to get a rest at some point for Bradley because Bradley, I think the manager quite likes Bradley. So um, Liverpool have got a really tough um, Champions League fixtures, haven't they? Yeah, their their group is not looking looking that great. And, for them. and they bought that winger Chiesa or whatever his name is. So even Salah's minutes are going to be managed a bit, I think. Yeah, no, I, I, I think yeah, Kies is going to come in. This is what I mean. I, I honestly yeah. do think we're underestimating how the impact of Champions League. And that's why I like Palmer. He's not even registered for Europe. And yeah. Um, yeah. even the likes of um, DCL and these players, you know, I'm trying to find players that um in teams that are in Europe. Brighton obviously looking good, but then their fixtures are rubbish. But um, I'm a bit wary. I think City have a best cap to cope with Europe, aren't they? I mean, you can't see Haaland being rested anywhere. No, I can't. Yeah, he, I think they obviously with Alvarez gone as well. Like I, I just yeah, it's, it's a trouble with going about Haaland. He's such a reliable captain. So you reckon you're closer to going with neither Haaland or Salah than you are for going with one of them at this stage, or is it? No, no, yeah. I, I won't be going without both of them. Okay. Because just because of the captaincy, like you showed in game week five, there's like weeks where it's very you can't rely on anybody else apart from Salah and Ireland, I think. They're like you could captain them any week, like in reality, right? Like even if it was the worst. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're person, happy captaining captain. either of them, but others you're not, are you? You know, um so it's risky. I mean you can take a chance on Palmer, but it is a risk, isn't it? It is. It is. Um, what do you think about this last question from FPL Dad? And we'll let you get to your. Is it golf you're going to go play? You said. Yeah, there's no rush. Um, so Pedro, Pedro or Welbeck? Honestly, if you've just done a short, short term pick, I think Welbeck. If you're going to get rid of him soon, yeah, like for the next two fixtures. Ped, Pedro's just come back from Brazil. So it will make a bit of difference probably to his minutes. Whereas Welbeck would have been training with the team, I expect. So. Yeah, why not? Welbeck scored, you know, he's more attacking than Pedro, probably. I mean, Pedro's got the penalties. Plus, not so many on him, so I'd definitely go with... Um, you like that differential, Welbeck. Welbeck, don't you? Yeah, I mean, some people, like, gravitate on the ones that are owned the most, don't they? Because it's safer. But I that think sounds like me. Way, I feel I think very that's safe. way to play FPL. <laughs> Uh, that's me when I buy players, but then <laughs> two, two, two are equal. If one's two players are equal, one's got one percent ownership and the other's got ninety nine. You should pick the one that's got one percent. But people and really don't. Go they're, for they're, it. 
they have picked the other one because um, you know you can in terms of points you can't say Welbeck's worse from Pedro for the next. It two is weeks, a two week punt, by the way. Yeah, so they're on mark or six. If anything, you'd say Welbeck is probably going to get more minutes than um, Pedro, especially this week. Agreed. All right. Well, Nick, it's been a pleasure. Is there anything you want to say to the viewers? Um, where can they find you? Obviously, the link to your X profile will be in the video description as well. But yeah, just any final messages? Um, we'd love to have you back again as well if you'll come back at some point this season. Yeah, great to be here. And um, yeah, just enjoy your games. Play your own games. Don't uh, take too much store by what other people say and just enjoy your FPL because at the end of the day, you're not going to win it. So don't, <laughs> you know, so you may as well just enjoy it. And, have fun, uh, yeah. I think the best way to have fun is to just concentrate on your little mini leagues. I mean, you know that one you're in the mind, the head to head league. Yeah, I love that. I really enjoy that. That's the first one I go and look to each week just to see what sort of kind of points everyone up so you kind of break it down you know it's and when you're trying to look at the overall that's when you get disappointed because you're always going to um it's always going to be an uphill battle so you know focus on your little mini leagues enjoy them have fun and uh that's what fpl should be about really isn't it so um yeah that's basically it couldn't agree and, uh, it's been great to be on the show and uh yeah got more to say really i want to lace up and go and play golf in a minute i'm gonna go and pick my mate up and we're going off to avondale we've got about 15 golf courses in christchurch it's incredible so wow. we play like a different we're always sneaking in you know <laughs> get there really before the um <laughs> Before the office opens and start playing, we don't start on hole two so no one sees us and we sneak around. I love that. And <laughs> scrap a quick. Make a run for the car. <laughs> That's incredible. I'm going to ask you more about that next time you come on and your old cricket stories as well. We like didn't get a chat about that there. today. Like go to concerts and uh, jump the fence and that sort of thing. Not because we don't like paying. It's like half the fun of going to these things is to... But I'll go on a mission to um, get in. I think Got anyone in. who's anyone who's not played a head-to-head -head league, by the way, I definitely <laughs> recommend it. As Nick said, because it's just like no matter how your season's going, like head-to-head -head is a whole different beast, and it, it keeps you interested in the game. Yeah, they're very good, aren't they? The head-to-head leagues. A lot of people don't play them, do they? I think they're so good. They're one of my favourite parts of FPL. I didn't know about them until recent years, and, and I, I definitely you don't have it. to worry about overall or anything like that. Every every week's like a new thing, isn't it, with the head to heads? For sure. Well, Nick, enjoy your golf. Um, we will get out of here, everyone. This was the game week four special with Nick. As I mentioned at the start of the episode, I'll timestamp everything. Do go back and listen to uh, Nick's history. His incredible history, in fact, I should say, I still think ancient, they're... ancient history, a ancient history. But there was still remember a time there was only ten, one. remember there was only ten people playing back then, and anyone could win FPL. All they had to do was turn up, and they'd win. You Make know, a transfer people, every week. That's what people say now, isn't it? Yes, it's a load of bollocks because um, all the present content creators were all there then, and they were celebrating a top ten thousand finish. You know, so it wasn't that easy. People say, "Oh, it was." really easy back then but it really wasn't it wasn't it was no. prob probably harder now i'd say just because of the sheer number of players isn't it but um it wasn't easy then though by any a million still a lot of people and, it is uh, so it wasn't that easy and you weren't spoon fed and you had to actually work hard to find the info didn't you which was good that there was a reward yeah. for the research whereas now yeah, it's you like, could you do research, research all week and no one else had it <laughs> Yeah, now it's everywhere, now, right? Now it, it's so hard. Now it just goes viral in like 10 seconds. It's like those tables for the expected things. Like they're really yes, good. Yes. 10 seconds have gone viral when everyone's seen them. So all information's out there, isn't it? It's like the stock market. It's um, all information's in the price and it makes it harder in a way, doesn't it? But it I wasn't find that, that fun though. I do find yeah. it fun though because it's even more satisfying, right? Like when you do have that good season, like... You feel like you've slogged it out. Like you're coming back from three million to eighty k last year. Like that, no, that itself was is painful. amazing. It's but painful, it's so but it's painful. amazing. 
so painful. I think that was my team value. I got up to 108 million and um, I just sailed home. I came home on a massive wave. I'll tell you what, I reckon another four or five weeks and I'll have been right up in the top 10, 10K, you know. To another 20 weeks and I've been got my top thousand, I reckon. I was sailing along. This is the season, Nick. Um, we're both going to try okay. getting a triple digit right. Sure. I, I think it's going to be a disaster this week. So I'm going to take Harland out. He's going to get another hat trick. And this will be the week where Salah doesn't um, equal him. This will be the week where Salah has 60 minutes luck. and he's got Champions League midweek. And get Just your I'm going to have to captain Salah, aren't I? So. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to captain. Scary, I'm on Harland uh, captain right now, but I think I might move to Salah. I'm not sure yet. If I had both, I'd definitely captain Harland. But um, but it's scary not having him. God, I hate wild cards. I wish I'd never pushed the button because even now, Harland, no Harland, no Harland. So you just what do you do? I'm hoping someone gets injured. To be honest, I was hoping that's the Harland only way you can decide easily. I was hoping right? Harland got injured, and it's easy, isn't it? <laughs> Nick, honestly, I, I I just feel like I could talk to you forever. This show could have been four hours. Um, I feel like I've rushed it, but that's why you're definitely going to have to come again, either to look at the disaster of the wild card or the success at some point. But disaster, we're definitely going to bring you on again. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a few guests who want to come on with you. So maybe next time I'll try to bring Simon as well and see if we can do a full analytics breakdown. Um, I get you guys and set you against each other and I'll just watch it. Oh, we're going to have some FPL boxing, our virtual boxing nice. analytics. Yeah, white collar boxing event. I'm ready for it. Maybe this but, is um, the week when Eze and Fernandez and um, Armstrong will get They're all finally going to pop, yeah. Pedro, dunk console winks, three goals each. Edison and Gold's going to take a penalty this week and uh, analytics will be on fire. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I think I I must confess, I must confess, I've actually had a look at um, FPL Review myself and uh, it is quite fun to tinker with, actually, isn't it? It's a bit addictive, isn't it? Just like changing things and just like I only use the free model, but it's addictive. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like a lot of it's just like it's just something based on data that maybe yeah. if you don't know the inputs of the data, how can you value it as highly as what the model might, right? Exactly, because you don't know what's gone into making up those projections, really, do you? So, And they change by the day. Like, you check the projected points. At least they Monday, do change. Monday, Wednesday. So yeah, at least they get change. I really annoyed with Fantasy Scout because they had that um, Rate My Team feature. And they, they wouldn't change it for, like, weeks on end. And it, You'd have players that reckon we're going to get 0.2 points and they'd been scoring like a hat trick for the last three weeks because they never updated it. Update. So you reckon FPL review updates on a daily basis, does it? It's, yeah, uh, maybe even a few hours. Actually, one thing I should say is I did a poll on this episode, Nick. And before we go mm. out, 77 people voted in this poll and it said, are you on wildcard? 43% are on wildcard. Um, yeah. yeah, it's quite a popular week. Um, official FPL said... It's the ninth most wild cards active in history, and I can only imagine yeah. that number goes up by Friday, Saturday. It's a good week to play it in a way because you've the transfer window shut, and you know. But again, it's so difficult. But I don't think it's going to get any easier, to be honest. I, you know, it's not going to get any easier, is it? With Harland and Salo and all. The, so We're going to always have these it, decisions to make. We're yeah. going to have a lot of tricky decisions to make, and that's why it's so good. But um, yeah. I still don't know, honestly. I might well end up with Harland and I had them all pre-season, Harland and Salah. And then Jota came along. And in the week before, it became clear Jota was going to be the striker. And that kind of changed everything. It was like suddenly, oh, you can take Salah out and put Jota in. Which was kind of true, wasn't it? Because he has played as a striker all three games. But um, that decision has been quite costly. But it's a decision a lot of people made, isn't it? It is. Um, I've just noticed we're getting to the point where new people are joining the stream. Milos just said hello, <laughs> everyone. So I've just let Milos know. Sorry, bro. Like, um, we we're just wrapping up. But I'm going to timestamp all of this. You guys come back. Nick, I'm going to get you back. You get to your golf. I need to get up in a few hours to get to Paris for a work event. I'm leaving in a few hours. And I'm going to go oh, walk wow. the dog. But thank you, Nick. It's been a pleasure. I'm definitely going to bring you back. 
And um, yeah, to what I said, the ancient best manager in the world. You said ancient, not me. So that one's on you. <laughs> Cheers, Nick. Cheers, everyone. Um, we will be back next week. Um, I'm actually going to bring on Hindu Monkey next week. So I know another old friend of yours, and I'm going to interrogate him. Yeah, I'm Never gonna interrogate him, man. Head to head league, he? But I have to interrogate him with that Muniz train. That he, he, the Muniz better do something this weekend, Hindu monkey, if you're watching, because I am gonna roast you next week, otherwise, bro. All right, peace, everyone. Cheers. We will see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>